You're watching Vox Africa. An American scholar based in the UK that's talking about Professor Eric Anderson says one woman to a man is not enough and he blames society for stigmatizing a man who wants to have multiple women. And he's saying monogamy is failing men. Not only is it failing them, but it is a socially compelled sexual incarceration that can lead to a life of anger and content, so says Anderson, the American sociologist at England's University of Winchester and author of the provocative new book, The Monogamy Gap, Men, Love and the Reality of Cheating. So join me in welcoming Professor Anderson to this exclusive on polygamy. Prof. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with this. You, you say monogamy is failing men and it is also a socially compelled sexual incarceration for men which can lead to a life of anger and concept. Can you Indeed. please explain that? Well, let's begin by saying that monogamy may also be failing women, mm -hmm. but I study men, my expertise is masculinities, mm -hmm. so I focused on just men for this particular research project, mm -hmm. but monogamy may very well be failing women as well. Mm -hmm. We know that monogamy has been failing men, and we know that mon monogamy has been failing men for over 60 years, mm -hmm. because 60 years ago, we initiated the first research into the rates of men who cheat on their, on their partners, mm -hmm. and we found 60 years ago that it was around 35 or 40 percent. Today, we show that it's about 70 to 75 percent. And it doesn't matter which culture you look at, it really doesn't matter which age demographic you look at, men cheat. And what this tells us is that the notion of monogamy, the belief that a man is going to have sex with just one partner, and in my book I interview both gay and straight men, so this is not just about straight men, we find that they're just not pleased with one sexual partner for life. In fact, they're not pleased with just one sexual partner for even six months or so. After a period of time with one partner, despite how much they love that partner, the sex starts to become routine, and they start desiring sex with somebody else. And the myth is that they can spice it up. They can do something different to make them be reinvested in their partners. And this is a myth, because the reality is what they desire is not different sex, more exotic sex, I'm sorry, more exotic sex with the same partner. What they really desire is sex with somebody else. So this is a fascinating scenario. What we have is this, the longer a couple is together, the more emotional investment they have in each other, the more love they generate. But the longer a couple is together, the less they desire sex with each other, and the more they desire sex with somebody else. So it's like uh, it's working the opposite direction. Absolutely. In fact, I like to say that when, when the sex dies, the relationship has just begun. Yeah, uh, according to your book, men want to be emotionally monogamous, but their body craves sex with other people. And uh, but the thing is, if men can have sex, the, the, like uh, self-control rather, over other cravings like food, alcohol and other things, why not control over their body in terms of sex? Well, the first thing I would say is that uh, when I say that men desire emotional monogamy, uh, this was a uh, study conducted in the West on men who've been socially constructed to value emotional intimacy with just one other. And of course, men may desire uh, multiple lovers to have emotional relationships as well. But for the most part, most men want emotional monogamy. They just don't want the sexual monogamy, right? But the question then becomes is, well, why shouldn't they control their emo Why should they not control their sexual desires? As you've said, they control other aspects. But do we really? Are human beings very good at controlling their drinking behaviors, their violence, their, their food? We're not. We are incredibly addictive creatures, and we don't manage those other things very well. But the difference is this. Well, one can very easily argue you know, that alcohol and illicit drugs have an incredibly damning effect on one's body. They're also very expensive. Uh, one can argue that overeating has uh, a very harmful effect on one's body. But sexual recreation, when practiced safely, can be very safe. 
So there's less stigma for the men, well there should be less stigma for partaking in those things than there are in drugs or overeating or alcohol consumption. Yeah, but, but looking at uh, the stigma, uh, why is it that uh, men get away with it and uh, women are always like uh, looked down upon in the society if they do what men had been doing over the years? for having uh, multiple, multiple sexual multiple partners. Things, yeah. uh, this is changing. This is called, um, this is called the double, uh, pardon me. <laughs> this is, uh, this is called, uh, what's it called? Anyway, there's a, uh, yeah, an, an unfair practice traditionally yeah. that says that uh, when men have sex, uh, that makes them you know, more manly, it makes them studs. <laughs> when women have sex, it makes them stigmatized, it makes them yeah. essentially sluts. But this double, t this double standard is eroding. Yeah. Women are beginning to have, particularly in the West, women are having more sex, recreational sex, yeah. without stigma. So this generation has thrown off all types of stigma from the past. Yeah. Homosexuality is no longer stigmatized the way it used to be. Yeah. Oral sex is no longer stigmatized. Anal sex is no longer stigmatized. Pornography is no longer stigmatized. Today's youth grow up with all of these things. They embrace them. They have very little difficulty with them. The one thing that has not changed, however, is their belief that they should have sex with only their partner. Monogamy has retained its cultural strength despite the fact that everything else is changing. Yeah, okay, let, let's quickly talk about infidelity. It's one of the strongest uh, factors when you talk about divorce, which has reached an alarming rate, Indeed. especially uh, in Europe and uh, other developed parts of the world. Uh, don't you think your book would end up encouraging uh, people to lie, to deceive their partner? I don't think my book could encourage people to do this any more than they already are. Okay. <laughs> and most all men are doing this. Mm -hmm. So we know, for example, that about three quarters of men cheat. Mm -hmm. We know that married men with children are more likely to cheat than married men without children. Mm -hmm. So just because one puts a wedding ring on doesn't stop men from cheating. Mm -hmm. So what I'm suggesting is men are already doing this. All over the world men are doing this, regardless of the religious faith. If men are already doing this, we need to understand why men are doing this. And when we begin to look at it, I'm showing that they're doing it simply because they desire sex. Not because they fail to love their partners, not because they're horrible, rotten human beings, but quite simply because monogamy does not work very well for them. And they want that recreational sex with somebody else. If my book gives people the opportunity to feel better about their cheating, to feel less guilty about their cheating, then to me, that's a good thing. And better yet, if my book begins a conversation in which people begin to talk about having open sexual relationships, where they're permitted to go off and have sex with other people, then that is truly a fantastic thing. Yeah, but it's like, let's look at cultures uh, around the world, uh, especially where polygamy is being sanctioned, especially in Africa. Uh, the men tend to, like, um, want to go out and do it confidently, and, but they wouldn't want to hear their partners doing such a thing. Why is that so? Yes, well, uh, this is sexual ownership. Uh, we know that men are actually more jealous about uh, the idea of their partners having sex than women are. Uh, on the other hand, when cheating is divulged, women are twice as likely to break up with their partners as men are. So men have higher rates of jealousy, but then when it comes down to it, they won't break up as often. Yeah. Women are more likely to break up. Yeah. Well. I, for, I forgot what your question was. I yeah, 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 we were looking at so the reason why, um, uh, like in Africa, like men would go out uh, and not really, want their partners to do the same. Want the, yeah, yes. So why? Why is that uh, prevalent? Yes, with men. Uh, and this is quite simply that we haven't been able to shed ourselves from the belief that our partners are supposed to be sexually faithful to us. We want to go off and do something but we don't want our partners to do it. And it's not just with sex, it's not just with monogamy that we do this. Uh, talking about texting while driving, a friend of mine said, well, it's okay when I do it, just not when everybody else does it. So this belief that I'm an exception, well, this is endemic with, it, with humanity, isn't it? Um, but we do know that men strongly desire sex more than women. We know that in cultures where all stigma has been removed, that, that gay men, for example, living in San Francisco will have more sexual partners than lesbian women living in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, we know that this is the case all over the world. So men are seeking recreational sex more than women are. It's not to say that women don't want it, but men are seeking it seeking. more than they are. 
but they don't want their heterosexual partners to have that same privilege mm -hmm. as they have. And this is, this is what's interesting about cheating, is cheating is a rational solution for men. So here's the problem. They get into the relationships, they're absolutely in love with their partners, they don't want to cheat on their partners. Many of them have come from divorced families and they say, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be faithful to my partner. And this is easy to do for a while. In the first three or maybe even six months of a relationship, the sex is amazing. It's new, it's exciting, but eventually it starts to become routine. We mm. get used to the same thing over and over again and we try to spice it up. Yeah. But even after that, we still want sex with somebody else. So at this point, men find themselves in a dilemma. They say, I'm absolutely in love with him or her. I don't want to change that. I don't want to lose the relationship, but I definitely want sex with somebody else. Cheating presents a rational choice for men. Mm. Because if they say to their partners, honey, I love you, but I want sex with somebody else, they're gonna get slapped mm -hmm. and probably broken up with. If they say, for example, a famous American politician in the news this week, yeah. Newt Gingrich, yeah, guess, yeah. his wife, one of his former wives, has said that he asked for an open relationship. Yeah. And what did she do? She broke up oh, with him. Yeah. And so men tell me, if I say to my partner, I would like to be in an open sexual relationship where we can have casual sex with people on the side, I'm gonna lose that partner. Not wanting to lose their partners, the only rational choice becomes to cheat. And then it has the added advantage. Men can have all of the sex they want, and it keeps their women faithful to them, because they don't allow their women to have the same privilege. So it may be a dirty trick, yeah. but cheating is a very rational solution to the dilemma that men find themselves in of wanting sex with somebody else but wanting to retain the emotional strength of the relationship with their primary partner. Okay, yeah, let's look at, uh, let's still go back to Africa. Okay. Several years back, uh, uh, the African men would go for multiple partners and uh, had several children because of famine uh, then. But like now, there is urbanization, things are changing all over the world. Don't you think uh, polygamy is getting out of tune to, to, to every society? I'm not so, I, I'm not anti-polygamy, not in any capacity. I, I am in favor of full gender equality. So I do believe that if a man should have the right to marry four women, then a woman should have the right to marry four men. And I understand that there are structural reasons why uh, countries have prevented this, They're worried about chains of families getting out of control, but isn't it convenient that men have created the laws that say they can have four wives, but the women can't have four husbands. Mm -hmm. Polygamy has had a very vital purpose in pre-industrial societies, particularly in agricultural in nations. Culture, yeah. Very important uh, yeah. to, the, to the strength of the society. Uh, so I'm not I'm not against polygamy and I'm not against polyamory in any capacity. This notion that people can have more than one emotional and physical lover at the same time. And why should we just have one on one when we can have, when we can have more than one? Yeah. So I'm not against that in any capacity. And I understand that Africa is moving to disassociate itself with polygamy. Yeah. But part of that is also economic in nature, mm -hmm. not just cultural. And part of that is because, according to Islam, one can have four wives, but one has to treat all wives equally. equally yeah. right? Well, that is increasingly hard to do in modern society. Exactly. To buy a house for four individual cool. wives and all of the other things, you know, very difficult to do. Yeah. So what's happening, of course, is men are saying, well, I'll just marry the one woman and I'll cheat to get my sex on the side okay. so that I can have the sex without having to sponsor for wives. Uh, and that, quickly, that reminds me of uh, the issue of uh, the, the issue in Islam, like uh, they said, uh, you can have marry four wives, but you have to treat them the same way. Yeah, but it's like, don't you think that people are using Islam to cheat? Like instead of like, like, like trying to legalize it through Islam, because it's not possible to, to love them the same way, provide them with the same things in the society. But it's like, don't you think people are trying to use Islam to uh, achieve their aim of cheating? Well, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to um, indict Islam. Um, I think people have religious faith and they believe in different things and people have different motives for their individual behaviors. Mm. But what I will say is regardless of religious faith, mm. people want to cheat on their primary partners mm. because they want sex with somebody else. Mm. Even if a man, an Islamic man, has four wives, 
that doesn't mean he's going to be satisfied with sex with just those four wives four either. Yeah. So cheating occurs. In fact, I know that in Togo, recent research has shown that 37% of married men have cheated 